For this video, we are going to be solving a perfect substitute consumer optimal choice problem. So let's begin. The first thing that this problem is, is asking is asking us to create a budget line for Juan. The budget line follows a standardized form. And here's the standardized form. Px, that's the price of good x, times x, plus py, which is the price of good y, times y, equals m. m equals money, or equals income, uh, that's pretty much what we use in microeconomics. Sometimes people use I. It's really up to you, but if you see an M, you know that means uh, income, money, for microeconomics. So we're going to use that M for this problem. So we already know the value for PX. The value for PX is 10 times X plus the value of PY is, we already know, is 5 times y, and we know the value of m, which is 200, income. So this is our budget line for one. Now that we have found one's budget line, it's time to solve the next part of the problem. It's asking us for one's optimal consumption bundle. Now, we are going to find a corner solution for this perfect substitute consumer optimal choice problem. So we're going to write the budget line twice. Okay, So I'm going to write the budget line over here as well. Because we need to find the corner solution for both sides of the corners. So for here, <clears throat> so here for the left side budget line, we, go, we are going to make y equal to 0, and we will solve for x. So 10x plus 5 times 0 equals 200. Then, of course, 10x plus 0 equals 200. Then we are left with 10x equals to 200, divide 10, then x equals to 20, right? Okay. When y equals to 0. Now let's go to the other side, the right side uh, budget line here. Now we're going to be solving for y, and we are going to make x equal to 0. Okay, so we got 0 by y equals 200. Now, perfect. Now we're going to divide by 5, both sides of the equation. So y equals to 40. Okay, y and x equal to 0. So we're going to need this information, okay? Now that we found, uh, found our corner solution for x and y, now we need to find our utility function. This problem has not given us a utility function. So we need to find the utility function. Even though we were not given a utility function, we were given a margin of rate of substitution. And we can use the margin of rate of substitution to find our utility function. So let's find our utility function using the marginal rate of substitution. So I'm going to scroll up. Okay. Okay, so we can have more space to work here. Okay, perfect. So we're given a marginal rate of substitution of 3 half. Okay. And remember, the margin of error substitution is the absolute value of the slope of the utility function. So this means that, that the slope of the function equals to negative 3x divided by 2. 
Now, if you don't know how I was able to find the slope of the utility function using the margin of error substitution, please watch my video on how to find the margin of error substitution for a perfect utility function, perfect substitute utility function. So here's the slope of the utility function here, okay? So now we're going to get all the values on the right side of the utility function to the left side. So let's begin. First step, multiply both sides by 2. And of course, this cancel out, and we're left with 2y equals negative 3x. Now, we want to get the negative 3x to the other side, so we're going to add 3x to both sides. So we have 2y plus 3x equals 0. So let's rewrite this function as follow 3x plus 2y. And guess what? This is our utility function. Our utility function is 3x plus 2y. We're going to use this utility function to find our optimal bundle. Now, the problem is asking us to find the optimal bundle for Juan. So let's find Juan's optimal bundle using this utility function and using the corner solutions that we just found for x and for y. Okay. Let me scroll down so we can get more space here. Perfect. So we found the corner solution for x equals 20 when y equals 0. And we found that the corner solution for y equals 40 when x equals 0. Remember, we did that just not too long ago. And we have a utility function. Our utility function is 3x plus 2y. And let's rewrite the utility function one more time on the right side. Now, let's plug in these values. We have a value for x of 20, and we have a value for y of 0. Like, let's plug those values into our utility function on the left side. So 3x, 3 times 20, plus 2 times 0. Remember, I got this. It goes here, and this goes there. That's how I got our values there, OK? So we got 60 plus 0, 60. So our utility equals to 60 when x equals to 20 and y equals to 0, OK? So this is our utility, OK? Now, let's get our utility from the other side now. So 3x plus 2y. Let's plug in our values from the top. Um, I apologize there. I made a mistake there. That's incorrect. This is actually 3x. And this is how I got my values. 40 goes into there, and 0 goes into there, OK? So that's 0 plus 80, 80. So our utility equals to 80 when y equals to 40 and x equals to 0. Here's our utility. So the optimal bundle for 1 
is really y equals to 40 and x equal to 0. That's the optimal bundle. Here's Juan's optimal bundle. Okay? And the reason is the optimal bundle because it has a utility of 80, okay, which is greater than 60. So that makes it an optimal bundle. Okay? Now, this problem is asking for another thing here. It's asking, what about if the price of x doesn't really equal 10? What if it, if it equals px? So what's uh, the demand for x? Okay, uh, let's find out. I think that that should be easy. So let's see. So the problem is asking that x, px is really px and not 10. So let's solve for that. Okay. Let's give it more space here. So let's see. So it's saying that px equals px, okay, and py equals to <clears throat> to five, okay. So let's we need one need to find the demand for x. So let's write our a budget line. So we know that px equals px, and x equals to x, and py equals to 5, and m equals to 200. Okay? So let's find the demand for x. Okay? So px equals to x, and we're not y equals to 0, 200. So px times x equals 200. And of course, we divide both sides of the equation by px. x equals 200 px. Okay? And that's our demand for x. Our demand for x is 200 over px. I think that was pretty easy, right? Was it? I think way too easy, as a matter of fact. Okay? As you can see, these problems are not complicated. They're very simple. Um, I really hope that you liked this video. If you did, please click like and subscribe. I'm going to create more videos on microeconomics. I'm going to show you that microeconomics is very easy. It's not complicated. And I want to help you. I know how it, how it is to not understand microeconomics. But it is very easy. It's not complicated. So that's my goal. I wish you good luck. Take care. See you around.